Wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, but when the age that gave birth to a controversial adaptation comes again, will they be able to correct course in season two? That is the question, if it even makes sense, on so many Wheel of Time fans' minds. I was very lukewarm on season one. Upon rewatches, I'd probably even knock it down to like a 5.5 out of 10 rather than my season one 6 out of 10 rating, but I still have a lot of hope that season two not dealing with the COVID restrictions as suddenly and also not losing a cast member causing a frantic rewriting could maybe correct course and get back on track. We've gotten our first substantial look into this season two with a teaser dropped on Amazon's account, and we're gonna be reacting to that here today. And at the end of this, I am also gonna talk about one point I really hope to see the show improve on. I did not get into my review because I wasn't able to quite pin it all the way, and now I will be doing so as a bit of a, a, an add-on, an addendum to this video. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and watch this teaser posted on the Wheel of Time Twitter account. Begin. Immediately we're getting like a yield waste looking set. I mean, that was just a straight up no way that's not gonna be the waste for them, right? Like the reason they'd be in some place like that is to film the waste. Kind of looking at this thought, those were like tents that were gonna be Aiel tents and was like, oh no, but no, those are those are definitely just production. <laughs> like they're setting up for food and stuff. Okay, that's fine, moving on. Um, Is that the White Tower? Yeah, that's definitely gonna be the White Tower. So we're going back there. We kind of saw that coming with how much they're amping up the White Tower in the first season. That's not Aiel. At least I hope that's certain. No, they're on horseback. That's definitely not ideal. They're not going that deliberately out of their way to just make some uh, negative uh, responses to fans. But uh, we have some different cultural looking people. A lot of waste. Okay, we're getting quite a bit of desert here. So we're going to be going ahead and entering the waste for season two pretty much confirmed. Uh, there's no other reason they'd be going this hard into it. So I'm wondering which characters are going to end up there and wow, exactly deep into books three and four they're gonna be getting for season two. Possible correction, possibly me doubling down. It depends if you agree with me or not, but this also could just be Falma. I've seen some people batting that around on Twitter or it's the Aiel Waste and all we're gonna be getting from them is a cold open where we see them going to go search for he who comes with the dawn. I actually really do like that idea, though I think we might see a bit more of them if they have the scene that actually is from the books where we see an Elaine, Egwene, and Nynaeve actually all meet some I yield, and I do believe that scene actually will be in season two, though I've also seen people saying this is just landscape around Faldara. I'm mostly leaning towards it actually being the waste, though, because it does not line up with the landscape of Falma. I don't think they would highlight just landscape around Faldara, something we've already seen this much in a teaser for season two. So for me, I'm thinking it is going to be the waste, and we're going to be getting some form of content there. But feel free to disagree, of course. It will read, everyone going in fine. I'm not seeing... Donald, uh, the replacement actor for Matt. Uh, they have seemed to be keeping him out here. Got a giant wheel prop. More just prop stuff working on. Good lord, that was one heck of a stunt throw. Holy crap. Wait, let's look at this again. Uh, Serpent Gift. Yosha Stradowski playing Rand getting absolutely thrown to the ground. Yeah. By... I assume what in the actual show will turn out to be a Trollic. That'll be throwing him, toss him around like that. I mean, there's one thing you can give season one some praise for. The, some of the stunt work, especially in that Dragon Mount Cold Open, was fantastic. And I hope they're bringing more of that in. Maybe he's being thrown around by an Aiel. That would be cool. I'd love to see Aiel throw Rand around or something like that a little bit. I think they've completely held back Donal from being in this, uh, which, you know, they want to make sure the first exposure we have to him as fans is... Uh, very specific, but overall this looks pretty okay. Uh, I think the show still has a lot of ground to make up after what could be considered a pretty controversial season one, and uh, I'm hoping we see an improvement overall. I'm not seeing anything that's directly addressing any of my biggest complaints, but I'm also not seeing anything that promises, you know, horrendous missteps. Um, but what I do, okay, let's go ahead and get into what I think season two could do to, uh, 
make up for a lot of the lacking of season one. Uh, because this, you know, it was a perfectly fine little look at what's to come. It certainly informed us as fans uh, from some of the stuff we might be seeing. That's got to be the Aiel waste, right? That's just not like the land around Faldara. No, that's got to be the waste. Anyway, okay, so season two of The Wheel of Time obviously needs to correct course in some pretty substantial ways. I mean, I gave it a six, saying like slightly above average. I think that was a little too high. I probably should have gotten down to like a 5.5. And I was considered one of the more positive people uh, for this show's reception. Man Carrying Thing even had a wonderful deep dive review where he got into where he sh thought the show failed in some really substantial ways. I recommend you check it on out. Um, but for me, I think the thing I want to see the most here is the Wheel of Time show hone in and actually craft a visual style that stands out and is very engaging for fans because one of the things that makes rewatching, especially the first season, more and more difficult, it is flavorless in its presentation style. Aside from some stuff that's just so visually mediocre in terms of VFX that it comes across almost like make fun of it bad. The show just didn't stand out aside from a couple of action sequences where they put way more effort in. I mean, the technology used with the cold open on Dragon Mount really allowed that stunt woman to bring something that felt distinct. That was like a scene that I was like, great, this is how the Wheel of Time will handle Aiel action. And it really felt visually different. But upon rewatching it and going back to it, I have just found it to be one of the most bland visual presentations I have personally gotten uh, for a fantasy adaptation, especially when comparing it to something that's like Witcher or, I mean, going completely unfair into the animation, Arcane. They each have a visual presentation that distinctly feels like how that show was adapting its material. And the way that Wheel of Time presented the story, I just don't have anything there aside for some very bad visual effects in the cold open at the beginning of the first episode, which talk about starting on a bad note, and then how they had to, uh, you know, scramble to shoot in a whole different way because of COVID restrictions, the ending. The only thing that stood out was negative. So I'm hoping season two is really going to hone in on an actual presentation style that has its own flavor, its own spice palette for the eyes, is a way to put that, to help it establish its own legs to stand on. Because you see a lot of the reviews, people are talking about how it didn't engage them or emotionally invest them. And I think that's just because it was presented so flat. And I think there was interesting direction. I mean, if you have someone like the directors that this show had involved, there is great direction happening. Nynaeve's Escape from the Trollocs stands out as something that I think had really good direction behind it. It was just edited to hell. And then the color grading they used also was just so unnecessary and unless I was watching it on a specific kind of TV in filmmaker mode, it looked just unappealing to the eyes. That and of course retconning some of the creative choices made in season one absolutely needs to happen. There's a very big rant that I've been developing especially after my last rewatch of the first season where the choice to have death be healing, which no matter how many times I see the counter arguments for that, no it's absolutely what's conveyed to the viewer there everyone I've talked to who has not read the books spoiler warning for season one uh, thinks that Egwene healed Nynaeve and brought her back to life. I mean, the battle starts right at sundown and after all the burning out happens, we see Nynaeve is cradled in Egwene's arms for presumably hours with burnt out black eyes. And then Egwene just heals her and brings her back to life. That needs to be retconned in some major way. Vague spoilers for later Wheel of Time books, but the idea and concepts for healing death are batted around in Wheel of Time, and it's never accomplished by someone who walks in the light. And with the whole philosophy of people being woven back into the pattern, healing someone from death is something that violates the pattern itself. It's not something that should be done by good guys in the Wheel of Time, and that's just why I do not like that choice, and I think it needs to actually be overtly retconned in Season 2, and I also have some pretty large issues with how much Shadow Spawn were used uh, after looking back at Season 1. I get in the books, you can keep a lot more of the creep factor in there, but I think in the visual medium, the more they show us Shadow Spawn, the more later books are going to have diminishing returns and how frightening they can be, how atmospheric their presence can be for various environments, and so I want to see Season 2 lean way more into the more interesting angle of the antagonist the show has had so far, which is Children of the Light. 
and Dark Friends, as well as further explaining The Forsaken, because no one I know who watched the show who hasn't read the books understands The Forsaken or what the encounter with them was all about. Having put on Fane's knife, not do damage, so many of the character negating choices throughout the season really need to be worked on, and I'm hoping, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the problems we saw were just re-edits and scrambling to try and make having Matt leave and the COVID uh, changes to shooting still a coherent story and season two will be unrestricted and really be able to redeem itself and rise higher than what we got. It just felt rushed. And I think my like end thoughts after all this time and a few rewatches of the season are it just felt underbaked. But yeah, that's my thoughts on the teaser for season two though. I think it had some interesting angles to it. I like seeing stunt work come back in it. I like seeing locations for, you know, different culture realization, the costume design, you know, there still continues to be a lot of what feels like passion behind the project. Um, I think season two just has to prove itself as worthy of the franchise that it's pulling from. And if it is great, we can look back at season one as fans as just something that obviously got screwed over by outside circumstances and needed to find its legs. It finds its legs and continues on from there. But right now, I'm still left in a hold pattern. I'm still left in a pattern of we shall see. But that is just my thoughts on the teaser and some correcting, of course, that could happen in season two. Uh, let me know what you think of the first season of Wheel of Time and this teaser in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you like to support what I do here. I got books, I got merch, and have a good one, y'all. Peace. <laughs>